think we broke attack weld. Today we are officially getting these Ford one-ton axles underneath this 87 Dodge Ram Charger. It's gonna be fun. We got these axles and brackets tacked on at my friend Holly's shop. You can see that on her channel, Mischief Maker TV. She had to go out of town. So now I am finalizing it. To start, we need to build like a truss thing over this axle pumpkin because it is cast and I can't really weld to it. Hence, not good. We don't want that happening. This one, just scabbed in there with some scrap metal. But I have this track bar bracket and these high steer knuckles from Barnes four wheel drive. They need to get welded in solid, but we need to make a new mount for that and a truss and a new mount for that other upper one up there. All right, to start, I'm gonna get out some cardboard and I'm gonna model around this pumpkin and then we'll go into the office and draw it on the computer. So basically the alloy that this axle pumpkin is made out of or cast out of is not really weldable. I mean, it is, but it's not something that you can just weld a bracket to and away you go. It's gonna get little hairline fractures throughout it. And the best you can do is the best you can do. What we really want though, is to connect this axle tube to this axle tube on this side. That steel is some good stuff that we can actually get a good weld to. And basically off of that bridge, we can mount this upper link. So to start, I just need to get the profile of this pumpkin and the shape of it. And I got a pretty neat trick to show you with that. All right, we'll get that out of our way. So now you can see the profile here very clearly and we'll get this link moved out of the way for now. We'll just take some cardboard and draw the outline. I wanna go to the center and to the center. All right, and then we'll outline the rock. All right. So now we can just take that, take it into the computer, draw that profile. Okay, so after going into the computer and drawing the thing we drew and then coming back and forth and measuring, this is what I've ended up with. Yeah, it's not, not very big, but I think it'll be perfect. I got a sheet of 3 16 I could use quarter, but I don't think that's necessary for this. And it just adds extra weight. So uh, we'll get it cut out and we'll see how well it fits. I'm back with a new truss piece. The only thing I did that's not making it fit right is I made it so I have to cut this collar back of cast basically to get to the good metal and I can weld really strong to that. So, I should probably get that trimmed out now. There's some uh, casting differences, I guess you could say right there and right there. I'm just gonna ignore those though. So now that we have the rear one made, I wanna make another one that comes in front and then I'll cap the whole thing with a, a nice top to it. That one's gonna be a little bit different. All right, so I have my two pieces and they just need to be welded on. All right, got the truss tacked on. This is what it looks like from the front. Super low profile. That's exactly what I was going for. Might even be a little bigger on here than I wanted. So two things before I start welding to this axle housing. It is made out of like some weird cast material that I mentioned earlier. And there's two tips to welding it. Not tips, they're almost guarantees that you have to do to get a successful weld onto this. First one is preheating, and the second one is peening the metal after you've welded it. All right, so I got my torch right here. I'm gonna preheat that metal and then I'm going to weld it up. I put the cover back on to minimize the warpage. Hopefully it will hold the housing more straight. I'm not too worried about that axle housing actually moving, but any, any movement that there is, I do wanna minimize that. So time to start preheating.
All right, sorry, I got a little bit carried away with the welding. But yeah, pretty much after you peen it, you just keep welding on it to keep it warm, but you don't wanna weld it all off at once. So you're gonna move around and then go take a break, go get a glass of water, whatever you want. That being said, I got carried away and just started welding other stuff that needed welding. Like these high steer arms from Barnes four wheel drive. Those are gorgeous. Look at that. That was so nice to weld. And then I ended up putting the plate on the top of this truss. It's just flat strap pretty much. And then I corner welded it all the way over and across as well as the backside there. That's how it looks from the front. It's nice and simple. And then this actually just gets mounted kind of in that area up a little bit though, like in that area. Tomorrow when I come in, I can get that upper bracket mounted. I can get this other side figured out and make it look pretty too. That side. And maybe we'll get the tube bender out and uh, play with that a little bit. I am actually super excited about that. Here it is. See you in the morning. All right, so good morning. I think last night I left you with uh, just this truss being built, but I got this upper mount design cut out and tacked on. Super basic, there's not a lot to it. But I did add a cool little stamp, I guess. Not a stamp, but some design. Right there. I got the temporary mount cut off of this side, and so it's just hanging down. But we need to build something that comes up and attaches it in the same level that that one is. Okay. So my idea was to just tie across all the way I didn't want to truss on this axle, but when you have upper link mounts, it kind of just makes sense to do that. But that's, uh, that's the gist. So let me get that tacked in. Okay, so we got these upper link towers done yesterday. We need to work on the hydro assist steering now. I have some tabs cut out here. I don't really know how well they'll work. For my measurements, I think that's okay. But this is the ram that we have. I've had this ram for a couple of years just kicking around. But I figured it would be a perfect time to use it for a budget build since it's kind of beat up and worn. Slide one end up into here. That looks good. So with this ram having an eight inch throw in it, when I mount to the inner hole on these barns high steer arms, it's actually perfectly like four inches that way, four inches that way from lock to lock. So that gives me my perfect eight inches. So I can just mount it straight to the knuckle here and we'll be good to go. Right there, like that. Right there, like that. I think that's a pretty good mounting location for it. The only thing left is this track bar bracket. It's fine. I like where it's at and I like what it is, but it doesn't match our other towers. So I just want to make something that kind of does. Got to measure this bracket so that we can re remake it. But I like three inches for that upper hole. All right, let's go make this piece and then we'll go from there. I like that, just like, I think that's really good. Nice and tight there, perfect. Okay, so the next piece, I want it to kind of wrap around this bar here. I'll cut out another piece here. Cardboard for the wind. So it's been mocked up, it's been run through and tested, and now I just gotta finish it up. We'll be done. All right, so this is going to be my track bar mount. It is definitely extreme, but that's, that's what this competition is about, right? Extreme things. I got all the pieces cut out. Let me show you kind of how it goes though. Somewhere something like that. Yeah, great, huh? That right there is a welder's dream. This is 
זה, זה דומני שה... Got that bracket tacked in, and we can now kind of see how the track bar is going to like it, essentially. It's really difficult for me. Well, you screwed it in. Do you need to unscrew it so? I don't know what to do. Oh, like, a lot. How far did I screw it in? Looking good. Well, we're exactly where we need to be. So, Holly is back from her trip, but you're leaving again and like tomorrow. Yeah. So we need to get a lot of work done today so that we can like utilize your help. Yeah. I think today we're gonna get front shocks on, shock hoops or whatever. Some of you think I got off on the wrong foot by starting with engine work, but we need that for the highway. I, th I think that was a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, it's all back together now, so now we can actually finish this build. So, let's get into it. All right. I haven't been doing a very good job updating you guys, but that's okay because we really haven't done much anyway. But let me show you what we did do. <laughs> we got just this shock bracket here, this lower one, and we actually have that. Look at that. So the shock that we're using is a little pricey. I think we spent 600 bucks a piece on them for these coilovers. Just a little over that. And they're Fox 2.5 coilovers with the DSC adjusters. Those are a really competitive shock for this build, but they're gonna be absolutely perfect, I think. Also, ignore the noise. This is a fully functioning shop in the day. Anti, vigilante superhero at night. But, what? We're getting ready to figure out what the top shock hoop profile is. And we're gonna use this light gauge metal to do it. And then we're gonna actually get into some tube bending and I'm so excited to use the new tube bender I got. So the first thing, we need it to come out of the frame right here, right? Yeah. One out, about four inches, and then we'll do a nice, gracious bend. Beautiful. So I knew we were going to be bending a lot of tubing for this project, so I got a tubing bender. So this one here is from Swag Off-Road. I haven't bent anything yet with it. It just, it looks beefy. Like it looks like it's gonna get the job done without a problem. And I got the air hydraulic ram for it, or whatever it is. So we need to bend some two inch stuff. I have an inch and a half die in it right now, so we gotta get that swapped out. We'll be good to go. Bender is set up for two inch. Now we just need something to bend. Let's go get it. Okay. What? What? What else did you want? That was fantastic. Yeah. This is it right here. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. I don't know how much they want me to use, but I'm using all of it. We're going to turn this hoop into a bigger hoop. Okay. A real metal one. A real one. Yes. A pretend one into a real one. We're also going to see what this thing actually does as far as like bending. We're going to hold it here and uh -huh. when this reaches here, we're going to stop. Is this set up right, Rudy? What do you mean, is it set up right? Yeah. Okay. What can go wrong? Let's see here. What is that? Like a 57 degrees? And if we let this off, it's gonna put it down to 55. All right, so after we got this bent, we held it up and I'm like, man, it is just not fitting good at all. And then I'm like, well, what if we put it in backwards? Maybe backwards will be better? So I put it in backwards and I'm like, oh, that fits way better. And uh, come to find out, backwards is originally the way we had it mocked up, so. Perfect. Backwards is forward. It's Ooh. backwards day. I haven't been filling you in. That is my fault. Sometimes I get so involved with my thoughts, I just run away and I just do it. And it's really hard to reel back a little bit and talk about what I've been doing. So let me just show you what I've been doing. If you notice, we have a coil over 
and it's kind of bolted in with tack welds and all, all that. So yesterday with Holly, we got these shock hoops bent and then the lower mount for the shock so that we could actually like line things up. And then today, which I haven't showed you, I put them in. <laughs> and then I actually have the upper end of the shock mount mocked up. I just need to finish that up and then we can finalize, make sure everything runs smoothly. We'll cycle the suspension and see if there's any problems anywhere and if we have to change anything. Some key things that I want to point out. On this side, I have my shifter really close to it there. And then on this side, I have my blower motor, which is really close to it. But both pipes are close enough. Like if anything, this one I think is tilted forward like half a degree, which is perfect in my, in my opinion. But anyway, let's get this thing dropped down and we'll uh, go through the suspension and see how it does, you know? We have this 42 mounted up, it's one of Holly's spares. We have the shock at almost full stuff, that's the tire almost full stuff too, but it changes as we articulate. So I'm going to drop this side of the axle and we're going to see the whole thing flex and that tire should come up and just barely miss that fender. So let's uh... And there it is, all the way dropped. Shock is almost at the bottom of its stroke. Tire is. Hold this. Yeah. So I had to trim the front off. We did that at Holly's, and then I also trimmed away some of that beautiful rest free body. Hurts me to do that, but this is cool. <laughs> you want to see how much. This clears everything. Full 42, full flex. I'm gonna lock it out one way. That's really good. I'm really happy about that. This is just shy of ride height. <laughs> Needs to come down about four, four more inches, but that's pretty much where it's gonna be. My plan for tonight before I go home is to get the other shock in on this side, tack everything together enough to hold the vehicle up, and put the springs on, and then set it down on the ground. On its own weight. On its own weight. A little lofty, but we have time. So we have 28 days to get this pile race ready. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, I think we got it. All the hard stuff's figured out. I really like how the suspension tracks and the shocks in there are gonna be a good thing. The back end's pretty, like, all figured out. So we're pretty much gonna have 28 days to build a roll cage. That's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Huh. <laughs> huh. Oh, I forgot about all the lockers and the transfer cases. We're gonna, we're gonna have a doubler in it and all that. We don't have all that stuff yet. We'll figure it out. 28 days is all of a sudden looking like not very many days left. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> it is gonna be fun. All right, let's get into it. I think we can live with that. That's one side of the top bracket. We need to get this lower bracket on and the track bar is kind of in the way, but it's not really. It just looks like it is. <laughs> All right, I have some pieces here and they go together and then they get welded onto the other piece that's on there. So if you look up here, those are in the way again. I only have one tab for these shocks and I want them to be double shear, not because I'm paranoid, but because that's actually how they're meant to be mounted. Like this would, this would fail very quickly. So I gotta get that bolt off of there, but then I put that up and uh, we'll be able to gauge some things from there. We'll start there. Let's tack this together here, because this looks like a great place. See how this fits up in there. Flawless. After uh, after we just trimmed it a little bit, put it back in, 
And I really like it. We're gonna tack it in now. This looks really reckless, I'm sure. All right, now we need to do exactly what we did on this side, but on the other side. And then after that, pull the shocks out, put the springs on, and then we can set it down on it. And after we put a couple more heavy tacks on those. All right, everything I did on this side, I need to do on this side, and it'll be done in just like that. It's on, passenger side, driver side. And they're tacked on pretty heavy. Now I just need to get springs on them. So I have some leftover springs from when I redid the Rudicon and they're just kind of used and abused laying around. And I think when I did the math, they were the right spring rate. We'll get them on there and we'll see how close they are. But uh, yeah. Here they are. Small one goes on first. The coil rates are 200 over 250. So, boom. Pull back in. Pull back in. And there we go. One side in, now we just need this other side. All right, we got that one on. We can now set this thing down off the lift. I'm excited to see what it does. Well, we reached our goal for tonight, so I'm super happy about that. This is, what is this? This is not ride height. It's about, it's probably about five inches high right now. Looks so good. Yeah. Super happy about that. Tomorrow we just gotta finalize it all, weld it all in, all that good stuff. But I'm going home and going to bed. See you tomorrow. Shock towers are welded in. I'm pretty happy with them. Adding the gussets made these shock hoops like way stiffer. It's way stronger now. Still not done. We'll add a piece over the top to tie it all in together after we put the grill on though, so we know where it goes. But I really like where it's at. It'll hold the weight of the vehicle. Now we need to work on the back half. So I know I'm gonna need to be cutting into the back of this a little bit. That's okay, there's rust here anyway. I plan on like cutting a bunch of that out. But we're also probably gonna have to cut into the tub just a little bit. But we won't know until we get the tire on and we can start making measurements and everything. But first, we actually have to mount this axle because it's just sitting here. Like it's just barely bolted in. So the next step to getting this thing more complete is to build axle purchase back here. So we're using a kit from Barnes Four Wheel Drive and basically it just lets you universally mount these leaf springs anywhere you want. It comes with these plates and I messed up measuring so I added a fourth hole down the bottom and that's just to slide my axle back a little bit further. So for axle purchase, rather than buying some or uh, using some from another truck, I, I made these. So they're two inch risers and I feel like that's not bad considering from the factory Ford had a one inch one. So we're just doubling that. Hopefully that will minimize our axle wrap as well. So I gotta finish getting these perches kind of cleaned up and then I'll weld them together. Then we can start locating where the axle is gonna be and start playing with the shocks. One. One and two. Of everything left to do on this thing, brakes and the shifter are the only things that I don't have figured out yet. So far, I've killed three bugs doing this. One, one of the times I was welding, and then I was finished welding, I opened my hood and there was a dead fly like right in the beginning of where I welded. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. I think I like that. That's weight on it. Yeah, that looks, that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Okay, I just want to tack these perches in until I know where my drive shaft is going. 
because that depends on my entire pinion angle and I don't really want to take this apart and shim it later. But we can at least guess, right? I think I'm just going to point it straight back like that. Impressed with how this is turning out. Just hope it's not atrocious. I like that a lot. We can get that tire mounted on here now and uh, see what we need to cut off. All right. If you haven't noticed yet, I have been fitting this up for 42s. So this is the only 42 I have. So this is the one we'll be using. Well, sorry, this is the only 42 I have. This isn't necessarily the tire we will be using. It's just giving myself options in the future. Obviously this is a little bit high, not far off, but it's hitting. So we know that has to go. That's okay. Cause that's all rusty anyway. Well, on this side it's not, but the other side is. So we know at least that much has to go. All right. So let's see here. I want to get a piece of cardboard match this profile and then we'll slide it back. Do I trust myself with that kind of body work? I don't know, we'll see. Take a box from dinner. We're gonna mark it out. Not big enough, huh? This is the body line, okay? And this is another body line. Then all we're gonna do is we're gonna go like this. There it is. That is the profile from the tire to the wheel well. So, we know that if we go like this, is that opening too big? It looks awful big. Awful big? Like, really big. We'll see after I draw it, maybe. After I get it cut. <laughs> really nice knife you have. That knife sucks. That's all I got, so. Pretty much all it flattened though, so. Some of the proportions are off, but I do better with metal than with markers and cardboard. So I don't know where the time went, but we're probably gonna be cutting it close. There's a lot to do. So today, getting this rear fender cut out. We're gonna get the rear shocks mounted. I want to stiffen the body to the frame a little bit. And yeah, like let's, let's get into it. There's no time. So we stripped out the interior. That's because the carpet needs to come up so we have to pull the seats out anyway and the headliner was pretty much toast. We need to pull the carpet out so that we don't catch it on fire and we probably need to add onto these wheel wells a little bit. They shouldn't need much, but we might get into them a little bit. So uh, yeah, I guess carpet needs to be removed now. So amazing. Is that that looks, I really want to say it's not mold, but I kind of think it is. I don't know what else that would be. Oh, I don't know. I'm not seeing like any rust or anything. All right, next the sound deadening stuff. Two, three. Holy cow, this is clean, huh? All right, pull these off. I haven't started making progress forward yet. Hey, today's gonna change that though. So I feel like once you start voltage stuff, like with mounts and all that, and the brights in here, like you'll be heading in the right direction. I hope so. Okay, so the plan here, we're gonna see how good I am at bodywork. Not great, probably. <laughs> but we're gonna cut out this square here, and then we're going to remove five and a half inches, and we're gonna take this lip, and we're just going to slide it straight back 
five and a half inches. And then we'll just have to add a piece there and it's a lot easier to bend that to make that profile than it will be to make this whole lip. Because that's what I'm really trying to keep. I'm really trying to keep these, these nice body lines. We can live with that. A couple, a couple small things to trim, but I can weld that together. I think I have something that matches the profile. Just so happens that this is it. And then you can also see the rest. There it is. I did a little bit of prepping. I got the rest of this fender cleared out. There really wasn't much to take out just mostly so that I don't see it when I put this up. So, this is super close to fitting. I haven't really done much with it. I gotta trim a little off that corner down there. We'll be ready to weld it on. All right, I think that's it. Gotta channel my inner bad Chad. I got this all tacked on and it's mostly flush. But we need a filler piece because we slid that arch of the wheel well back. And this is what I've got going so far. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So I just gotta trim it up a little bit and then we can start uh, tacking it in. Okay, you might be asking yourself, why would you do this to a rock crawler or something that goes off-roading all the time? My answer is because I want it to look nice. Not saying other things look bad, just saying that this is how I want it to look, so. This is my first time doing any real body work ever, so this is going really well. Just look at that. You gonna watch me struggle? I sure am. Piece of cake. There it is. I like it. Okay, so after I cut out the fender, I needed to fill the hole. And so I made something to do that with. So this is what I got going. This right here just comes off and that's all, that's all it needed. And that's what it looks like up in there. It's all tacked in. Since it's gonna take a little bit of time to actually weld all that up, I figured I might as well get the other side to the same point. So when I have them both done, I can move back and forth and try to keep this panel a little bit cooler so it doesn't like warp and twist funny. So, just gonna get this passenger side to the same point. All right, so it's the next day. I got both the fenders fully welded and ground. The next thing I have to do to finish these inner fenders and get everything buttoned up back there and sealed again is actually my shock mounts. So for shocks in the rear, I went with some Fox 2.0s. They're 14 inch strokes. They should be enough for the back of this thing. The only issue is I gotta come up through the floor about three inches to get them to mount. Uh, at the right height. So we need to get that shock in there, get it lined up, and then we need to build some brackets that'll actually hold them in. The tricky thing with this is I'm not coming off the frame with these rear shock brackets. I'm actually tying them to the body, and then I'll be tying the body to the frame using the roll cage and everything. So hopefully everything's just super rigid. Other than that, let's get that shock in there and see what it needs. So this is the bracket that we came up with. I think it will work pretty good. Now we just need to get this cut into it, get it tacked in place. All 
All right, so we got the shock mounts just tacked in on either side. They're just touching sheet metal right now, so we actually have to add some real structure to it. And the first thing that I'm gonna add is this crossbar, and I'm just gonna trim it down into place. And then I have five holes in the floor that attach to a cross member down below, and I'll put the five holes in this. And I think it'll just tie everything together super strong. And like I said, when we build the roll cage, we'll have one of the down bars come down and be the support on tops of both of these. Let's get this bar trimmed into place and uh, get those holes drilled. All right, so I got this bandsaw table from Swag Off-Road. I actually got my bender from them as well, but it has quickly become one of my favorite tools for trimming and stuff. It means I don't have to use the sketchy cutoff wheel anymore. So, yeah. All right, so only thing left is to put it in. We should probably grind off the floor a little bit because we're gonna actually be welding it to it. My holes even line up. Wow. Before I do any welding to it, I want to get a couple bolts in it so that we can kind of put some pressure on it, see where it actually wants to lay. Let's do these four. Looks pretty tough, actually. Now I gotta crawl under there and tighten those up. All right, so Janelle's gonna stay up here and hold this wrench on those four bolts. We're gonna go underneath and tighten the bolts. It's almost impossible for me to show you properly. This is the factory shock cross member um, that the shocks bolted into. They bolted into these holes right like there. I added this piece in and I have it welded across and I have it welded to each side of the frame. And I'm just gonna use that and sandwich the body and this frame together. So doing it this way lets me remove the body in the future without cutting anything. I'll just have to undo these bolts and then undo all the body mounts. And the whole frame and roll cage should be able to spread apart from each other without an issue. So, going on the far left, yeah, whatever, passenger side. Oh, whoops. You're right, let's go far left. Cool. There's a nut, there's, a, there's another one, here's another one, there's the last one. So, there it is. Ready to weld to the body. Super strong. Looks good. What's your opinion on them? I like it. Plus, like, if we put the back seat back in, then like, you won't even be able to see that. So. Yeah. Even if you can see it, though, it looks good. Okay, so per the rules, I'm not actually allowed to help Rudy, which is why I haven't been, I've been MIA for so long. I've been mostly behind the camera. But since I can't help Rudy on the rig, I can mount tires, right? I mean, it's not technically helping on the rig. Plus, I'm not doing anything anyway. Okay, so these are the old bead locks that were on the Rudicon before we switched to race lines. And we have these 39 inch tires. So we're just gonna mount these up so Rudy has some wheels to roll around on while he's mocking things up. Was the last one that we have. Now we got tires mounting. Alrighty, we are set to go. And if anyone asks, I charge two cents an hour, and I was never here. So Rudy There's didn't. There's a set rate. Huh? There's a set rate. Is there a set rate? Yeah. Oh man. Hour. Well, in that case, I was never here. These tires just magically got mounted. 
All right, so it's been a while. You can tell because the sun is down. It's pretty much just taken me a while to build that. So what this is is my rear lower shock mount for the axle. So our upper mount up there, lower mount right here. I gotta weld it together all the way. And then it just goes on just like that. So if we go over to this other side, I have it on already. Right down there. It's beautiful. We're about ready to bomb those in with weld. And then I think we have shocks front and rear, springs front and rear. We've got to finish bombing on some of the mounts for that. And then thanks to Janelle, we now have like some roll around tires if we still take air. I think the next step is roll cage. That's for the next video though. All right, so we got the rear shock mounts all welded in and, and put in together really nice. We put the front shocks back on. It's time to put the grill back on and the radiator and all that good stuff up front. Let's see if, uh, if I remember how to do this. It goes behind that. Just putting the grill back on, just it really does just tie it all together. So we have shocks on front and rear, springs holding up the weight of the vehicle, tires on. I don't know if we're gonna run these tires yet. She's sitting a little tall, that's okay. But I wanna get it pushed out and uh, flex it out with the forklift and we'll see what it can do. Super exciting. Yeah. There's no steering arm yet though. Okay. We can go a little more, should we? Has something to do with up anything in here. Maybe let's not go higher. Why? Just in case. Well, I want to know, like, what popped. That's fair. Well, there it is. Holy crap. She beastie. She is beast. You're not even like... You're not, you're not even touching. Oh, like, I am touching. Barely. I am touching a lot more are than you? I want to uh, be. I guess you are. Not enough body flex for the door to not open. Hmm. Oh, but too much for it to shut. Okay. Is it body flex or is that just the hinges on it? I think the hinges on it yeah, suck. Yeah, I think it's just the hinges. There it is. What is that? Anyway. 45. That's not bad. I'm very happy with it actually. We have a little bit more flex in the rear, but I think my lower shock mounts are kind of a problem and I need to relocate them a little bit. But everything up here is looking like gorgeous. Anyway, so I'm gonna consider this the suspension tested and flexed out. Everything moves as it should, I think. We still need to finish the steering though. I think I wanna do that in this episode. Yeah, let's get this thing back on level ground and pushed into the shop for the night. If you think this build is turning out awesome, you should go vote for us on Onyx Off-Road. We could really use the help. So what the voting is for is for a competition against two other teams of YouTubers who are building off-road rigs like this. In a couple of weeks, all three of these rigs are gonna go on a week-long excursion to push these machines to the limits. And the winner of that expedition gets to go on the more prestigious ultimate adventure. Notice how I said prestigious. You know. Thanks for watching. Roll the end credit.